Good morning. Glad that you're with us for Sunday School this morning. We're finishing up the last couple of chapters of the book, Speak Life. And it's been all about healthy communication in the way that we think, in the way that we uh, talk, and the way that we pray. Today, the chapter is entitled, Weird Free Prophecy. When we think about prophecy, a lot of times we think about foretelling something that's going to happen. But the purpose of prophecy is to bring a word of encouragement that really reveals God's heart for people in a particular time and place. And throughout the scriptures, prophecy has been a powerful tool that God has used. So today we're going to look at what Paul said to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We'll be reading 1 through 5. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For anyone who speaks with tongues does not speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries in his spirit, but everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. Let me read that one more time. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. And I would that every one of you would speak in tongues, but I would rather that you would prophesy. He who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongue, unless he interprets it so that the whole church may be edified. So Paul is encouraging the church in Corinth to, to encourage each other through prophecy, to strengthen each other. And I, I want to read you a little section about what um, our author, Brady Boyd, had to say. Remember, Paul was writing to the church at Corinth, a city known for its beauty, its independence, its competitive spirit, and its hypersexualized, persuasively deviant culture. Corinth was the Las Vegas of its day, and yet here in the middle of the ancient sin city, a church was formed. When Paul encouraged the believers at Corinth to pursue the gift of prophecy, he was trying to help them welcome the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. It was as though he was saying, you will experience the quickest, most penetrating most life-giving growth in your church when you learn to speak divine words to one another. This wasn't what uh, wasn't about asking the Corinthian believers to be smarter or wittier or better at active listening. It was about allowing the Holy Spirit of God to break into their lives and produce something supernatural in and through them something that they would never conjure up on their own. So prophecy is a gift from God that we should eagerly desire that enables us to speak on his behalf. The people who commune with God, he gives us ideas about what to say to the people that he loves. He's reminding us that prophecy is meant to be a part of the Christian life, of the body of Christ, that we would encourage each other, strengthen each other through prophetic words. It's asking God, what are you saying, Father? Do you have a message, something that you would like to bring through me to that believer? So, what about it? Have you ever thought about asking God, 
do you want to use me to give a word that would encourage someone? Pastor Boyd says that there are three useful questions when we think about prophecy. The first one is, what can I say that will provide strength, courage, and comfort to another believer? So the next time that you're talking with a friend, how about trying this? As you're listening, instead of trying to think of what you'll say in response, how about asking the Father, what's your heart for this brother or sister of mine? Is there something you want to tell them through me? It can be a powerful thing to let God use you to encourage or strengthen another believer. The second question that Pastor Boyd says is helpful when we think about prophecy is this. What has God spoken that I can infer, confirm. So God speaks through his word. He speaks through the circumstances of our lives at times. He speaks through wise counsel. Is there something that's quickened in your heart from the word for a friend? It could be your spouse. It could be your child another believer? Is there something in the word that God's kind of stirring in you to encourage another person? That's how you can confirm something that God spoke. So God's at work and he uses us to confirm his love for the people around us. These three questions. First of all, what can I say that will provide strength and courage and comfort? What has God spoken that I could confirm to another person? And then the third question is, is there an opportunity for me to be generous here? My husband is really good at this. He has a generous heart. Um, there are times when he challenges me and I want to say, hey, cut it out. Um, but he has that generous heart knowing that whatever God prompts him to give is important to give to another person. Um, I've learned a lot from that guy over the years. Being generous with our time or our money or our words, that's not normal. It's not the way America thinks. A lot of times we're thinking about what can I get? Yeah, I'll do that favor for you because then you'll owe me. Or we think about our stuff. Hey, I don't want to lend my stuff. I want to keep it and I want to keep it in good shape and all of those things muddle up the promptings of the Holy Spirit when he's telling us, give, give. That's why when you get a, a prompting to be generous, you can be pretty sure it's from God and act on it. Act on it. Don't be afraid that you are going to lose out. In fact, when you give with a generous heart, God pours back into your life. You're giving on his behalf, and he pours back into our lives for that gift. If you're prompted to mow the, the neighbor's grass or rake their leaves, do it. If you're prompted to babysit for a friend so they can have a night out, do it. Lord, where can I be generous? It's a great question to ask ourselves. And it, it's in this chapter under prophecy, but it's, it's a part of how God will prompt our hearts to show his goodness to people around us. 
when we're extravagant with what God entrusted to us with our time, with our resources, with our words, when we're extravagant and generous in the words we use, God's heart is seen by the world around us. People notice that it's a different kind of attitude. It's a different kind of living, and it shows Jesus through your life. Let's do it. Let's be known as the people who are generous, the people who are encouragers, who strengthen other people, who comfort other people. Let's do that, church. God's using his body to show himself to the world around us in 2020. People's level of stress or fear, cynicism, have really reached an all-time high. COVID, the isolation that we've all been through, political climates, and the racial inequities that we've seen in this last year, it's lifted our stress to a new level. But God's word reminds us not to worry, but to start standing up and to be strong. I want to read you Luke 22, 25 through 28 from the message. It's Luke 22, 25 to 28. And here's what Jesus said. It will seem like all hell has broken loose. The sun, moon, stars, earth, and sea in an uproar and everyone all over the world in a panic. The wind knocked out of them by the threat of doom, the powers that be quaking. And then, then they'll see the Son of Man welcomed in grand style, a glorious welcome when all this starts to happen up on your feet. Stand tall with your heads up high. Help is on the way. This is Jesus' prophecy about the days before his return. When we see stress rising high, when we see panic throughout the world, stand strong, raise your head, look to him, and let's let him use us for such a time as this. We, as we anticipate Jesus' return, Let's choose to speak with words that encourage, words that strengthen, words that are um, comforting. God is speaking. We get to share his heart with people around us. God is near. Do you want to have a good relationship with your spouse or with your child? Well, then... Watch your words. Don't criticize, but instead try building them up. Let's use our words wisely. Let's raise our awareness of God's activity. Stop and ask those questions. What can I say right now, Lord, that would strengthen, encourage, and comfort this person that I'm talking to? Lord, is there something you want me to confirm from your word? Something that's from your heart for them? And Lord, how could I be generous to that person? Sunday was Pastor Appreciation Day. And um, a friend sent, a few friends sent a note to just encourage. It, it means so much. It's powerful. You and I have something to give the people around us, confirming God's heart for them out of the things he says in his word, 
out of the things he puts in our hearts and out of our generosity. Let's do it, church. Let's not look like the world, but let's stand up and be strong, ready to share the reason that we have hope. Our Savior is returning, and he's coming for a church that has a heart to follow him like real disciples that looks like him. You and I, we can show that kind of a love to the world around us. Let's do it this week. Talk with you next week as we finish up the book. Thank you.